What's going on everybody? Welcome to today's YouTube video. And this is gonna start a little, I guess, kind of mini series going over my new workout split. So after prep, after we've kind of gone through or at least start this recovery phase, I decided to kind of change up my split. I've been running the same split and pretty much the same workouts for almost two years now. And honestly, not that I've gotten tired of them because I honestly still enjoy the training. I just wanna change things up just a little bit to kind of hopefully reignite some of that fuel and that passion for the gym. So to change things up, I used to do a five day split where it's chest and arms, back and delts, legs, and then upper lower. And now we're gonna to go to a six day split, but it's gonna be three on, one off. So three on, one rest day, three on, one rest day. It's gonna be a push, pull legs, and then a chest, arms, back, delts, and legs. So kind of a similar split. We're adding one more day, but also extending it from a seven day rotation to an eight day rotation. So that does mean like not every day of the week is correlated with a specific day like it was in the past. We're gonna have things cycle through. And I kind of enjoy it because I'm doing a lot of traveling. So I can kind of, once again, just when I need to take rest days, I take rest days when I travel. Um, I just go ahead and jump back on the program when I get back. But regardless, I'm gonna take the next six videos and break up just basically every single workout. Hopefully I can do it in slightly different variations each time. Today, I'm gonna do a voiceover because I'm at Dixie and they do play the music pretty loud, which once again, makes a great gym environment, but not as conducive to filming gym content. So hopefully um, a combination between filming at Dixie, maybe at Crunch as well as East Sporta. Maybe we get Katie in a video and do like a, a mic'd up video for a leg day with her. So hopefully we can kind of change up the content as I break up my new program and hopefully give you guys a free program as well. A couple of key things, once again, today is me a push day. So it's gonna be chest, shoulders, and triceps focusing on the chest. So we're gonna do that to start. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about everything. I'm gonna do a voiceover. So I'll go inside, film the entire workout, and then actually dive more into the workout itself, um, going over everything, the sets, the reps, everything else. So yeah, without further ado, um, also shameless plug, Barbell, um, basically my new apparel sponsor that I've been working with for the last several months. Everything I'm wearing, I literally am dripped out in, in Barbell apparel 24 seven. You guys saw the London vlog. I'm wearing this exact same thing, wore it on a plane, feels amazing. But I live in their recon joggers and these stealth hoodies. Highly recommend going checking them out and link in the description. Otherwise, we just popped our pre-workout, we popped our Reese's, and now let's go get a nice little chest pump with this push day. And yeah, jump into the voiceover, so see you guys at the voiceover. And here we are at the voiceover. So first things first, we're starting off with the barbell bench press. This is a movement I'm adding back in after about two years off. So we're doing proper warm-ups, just the bar, then throw a 25 on each side, make sure we get the joints feeling good, the movement pattern feeling solid, then 135 or 45 on each side, followed by 185 or a 45 and a 25 per side, making sure that the weight feels good before we go into our working sets. And I will say, for the most part, this program is gonna be a little bit lower volume, but with something like the barbell bench press or other exercises like the squat, you'll see I'm gonna do three working sets just so I can make sure I get the movement pattern back as that's the most important thing. Obviously right here you can see 225, it's feeling pretty heavy. I've benched 315 in the past and this does not feel light to me whatsoever. So it's gonna take some time, but I do know that the more sets I can do now, the better my body's gonna get at the movement and then I can really start to focus on strength gains where at first it's more so just my body getting better at the barbell bench press, which is gonna help with a skill focused movement. And then also you can see on that last rep underneath me is a red pad and that's just to help me stabilize so I'm not slipping and sliding on the bench. As nice as these benches are, um, that red pad just adds a little extra sense of security. And then also I have my wrist wraps on. Once again, just to protect my wrist, make sure we're focusing on the task at hand, which is benching some heavy weight. And this is my third set here. Um, and this is gonna be the full set. You guys can see, obviously, set one to the last set. And the biggest thing here, once again, is focusing on good form, good technique, a slight arch in the back, as well as using some leg drive. And I do feel kind of uncomfortable, I will admit it. This is not feeling super easy, but we get a nice little rep there and we move on. Next up, we have a movement that I personally love and have had in my program for a long time is the incline machine press. And I absolutely love this machine because at the start, you can actually use your foot to kind of get the weight up and then you can start pressing. So you can't really see it, it's off frame right here, but you might be able to see it as I start my second set because I'm just gonna do two working sets here where you can kind of use the basically the foot lever to get the weight up and then you can start pressing. We're still got our wrist wraps on. As you can see, I use the weight right there drop the weight, 
boom, and then we're back up. And a big thing here, once again, is find a incline press that your body enjoys. I do not feel any sort of joint discomfort or joint pain here. You could do an incline Smith machine. You could do an incline dumbbell press. You could even do incline barbells. But I love the fact that this machine feels really good in my joints, and I'm able to push pretty close to failure. As you can see on these last few reps right here, I don't think I'd be able to do this on a dumbbell or a Smith machine. I think some sort of stability would come into play. And the fact that I can just press as hard as I can here, we get a couple lengthened partials as well at the bottom that you can't really do with uh, dumbbells or barbells. So the machine's really helpful there. Next, we'll go ahead, finish up the chest with some flies. And a big thing for me this off season or this bulk is really focus on my chest. So that's why we're doing all three chest movements on a push day first. So while I have the energy before I'm fatigued, we're doing chest, chest, and more chest because that is what I wanna grow more than anything else. I feel like I have decent shoulders and decent triceps, but I do feel like my chest is a little bit lacking. Here, big thing, once again, a slight bend of the elbows at the bottom of the rep and really trying to squeeze and have a good contraction at the top. Honestly, looking back at this, I could probably slow these down a little bit or maybe drop the weight in order to have better form, but we wanna have bent arms at the bottom and then go ahead and fully extend our elbows at the top. And a good cue that I've personally been using, actually kind of steal from my coach, is less of the hands coming together and more so of the elbows coming together. Because if you're thinking about your hands, you can kind of get away with cheating a little bit, having more bent arms. But if you think about getting your elbows together, that's the most important thing. Because you can bend your arm at the elbow and get your hands together without actually fully contracting your chest. So that's a big thing here I'm working on. Once again, just two sets here. And the big thing is to make sure that I'm not forcing any reps or trying to round my shoulders too much. I try to keep my chest up, my shoulders back, and really squeeze the chest. But this one, I will say, I just don't have the best mind-muscle connection with, so it's a work in progress, but I still love the pec deck, especially following up a flat press, an incline press with a fly. It's just a good way to hit your chest in all three movements, but I definitely think there's some room for improvement. And here you can see me doing a couple length and partials, which I'll do at the end of my last set. Next, we'll go ahead and get into the shoulders. Once again, a great machine I love. You could do a barbell shoulder press, you could do dumbbells, but I do like this machine. Once again, fairly smooth in my joints, allows me to push pretty close to failure without having a risk of injury. So here we go, once again, two sets. Everything besides the bench press is gonna be two working sets. Once again, the big thing there is training very close to failure, if not to failure each set. I don't need three sets, I don't need four sets, and I'm pretty accustomed to most of these movements, so since I'm pretty proficient at them, I don't need to quote unquote learn the movement like the barbell bench press and do three sets. I can get away with two. I do do warm up sets for all my exercises. It depends on the exercise. I might do one to two warm up sets, but then once I'm feeling good, I go ahead and get my working sets. And as I mentioned, the machines just allow you to push a little bit closer to failure, have a little bit more stability on your side. So you can really focus on just driving that weight up. And in this case, back as well as I do the shoulder press, but really love this machine as well. And will definitely be a staple in the quote unquote bulking or off season moving forward. A couple more length and partials. I'll do length and partials for just about almost every exercise at the end of the movement if it's on a machine. So on my last set of any machine exercise, I'll do some, some length and partials just to really push to failure. Next, we'll get into our dumbbell lateral raise. This is always an exercise that you kind of have to pick heavy weight with not so great form or light weight with really, really good form. And I've done light weight with really, really good form for a long time. So I'm kind of trying out a little bit of heavier weight with a little bit less pristine form. As you can see here, I am doing maybe just a little bit more body language than what I would call quote unquote perfect and I'm not able to get the weight necessarily as high as I could if I was using maybe 20 pounds instead of 35 pounds, but I do feel like I have a pretty good mind-muscle connection here, and we're gonna experiment with it for a little while. Two sets here, training pretty much as close to failure as I possibly can with the heavier weight and maybe even some partials at the end. Lastly, we'll get into our, actually not last, so we have two exercises left, but we have triceps now. We're going with the tricep push down. Yes, I know this is not gonna be the quote, quote unquote, most optimal exercise using one rope rather than two. It doesn't allow you to have the full extension at the bottom, but honestly, in this gym, it's the best I can do. And I think it's more than enough if taken, once again, close to failure with good form. But the biggest, here, biggest thing here I'm trying to focus on is keeping my elbows in the same position and really locking my shoulders. Because what happens for a lot of people is when you go a little bit heavier, which I'll honestly am guilty of at times, my shoulders start to round forward and my elbows start to track forward as well. So you can see it a little bit there, but I'm really trying to keep my upper arm as parallel to my body or I said 
should say perpendicular to the ground as possible and really focusing on the elbow extension which is what the tricep does and keep my shoulders at bay and allow my wrists a little bit of movement just so it's comfortable for my overall kind of posture and the biggest thing here once again training as close to failure as possible maybe one or two parcel at the end squeezing out that last rep and then we'll move into honestly another exercise i've not had in the program in probably about two years is the body weight dip or hopefully eventually a weighted dip and this is one of those things where i'm at the last set or sorry last exercise of my push day i don't have all my strength i'm pretty fatigued but i want to get a little bit extra stretch and focus on the triceps and the big thing there is sending the elbows backwards if you want to do a little bit more of a chest focused dip you want to keep that chest a little bit closer to your hands but here i'm trying to have my chest go forward my elbows go back and more of a tricep focus and the thing here i'm more so just going for a burnout this is a little bit of what i'll call kind of chasing the pump eventually hopefully um, i can add some weight but right now for my two sets in the 9 to 12 rep range i don't need any weight at the end of my workout i am fatigued I am burnt out, so we're just going to do some body weight here. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know. Give me some feedback um, with me doing a couple voiceovers for the next few workouts. I don't know if you guys want to see every single set, if I'm talking too much, too little, you want to hear more about form, or just my overall outlook on exercises and exercise selection. Give me some feedback down in the comments. I greatly appreciate it. Without further ado, I'll go ahead, let myself finish up, and then I'll pass it back to past Jack after the workout. So, yep, talk to you guys soon. That's a wrap on the workout. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the voiceover. Um, if you did, let me know down in the comments below and I can do some more of those in the future. Otherwise, I think um, just general stats, I'll kind of throw at you guys currently. It is December 1st. I am right around 165, which is, I would say, just under 20 pounds up from my lowest weigh-in on prep, which is 147. Once again, that was a very depleted weigh-in. I probably was like closer to 152 two-ish on stage when I actually was kind of full of carbs and had some more water in me. So I would say um, overall, maybe about 12-ish pounds up from my kind of like, what we'll call my low on prep. Otherwise, feeling good. Definitely have a little bit of fat on me um, now, which was definitely needed. And I'm kind of just embracing the bulk. I'll definitely do a full video maybe in the new year about my plans moving forward as far as um, kind of like, yeah, basically bulking until um, probably mid-summer if we do make a trip, Katie and I at some point, but until then, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy training, fueling my body, good food, healing relationships, here, healing my body, relationships with Katie, my family, food, all that kind of stuff that prep, uh, I don't wanna say like ruined, but definitely kind of had to put on the back burners during prep, I need to put those forward again, and then I will say everything except my physique <laughs> physique, physique has been excelling in the last month or so. I feel much better nutritionally as far as I get to eat more food, more fruits, more vegetables. Digestion's been great. I have still mostly whole foods. I get to travel stress-free. Like everything's better except I don't look as shredded, which honestly for me right now is not a big deal. I can definitely I'll basically always be about 12 weeks away from being shredded. So if I want to, I can, but right now we're chasing a 315 bench for reps and a 405 squat for reps. And that is my bulking goal. So other than that, yep, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. We got a pull day next. Oh, peace.